Guys, what's going on? Welcome to hashtag TNT Joe Fi. I am your host, Jerome Ortega. I am tired. AF. Super tired. Super tired. I've been working like extra, extra OT on top of OT. Today is Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, uh, October 27th. It's another cold day today. We had snow again this morning. I need that snow to stop. Anyway, what's going on, guys? How's it going? How you doing? How are you liking? Uh, how are you liking these uh, Pixel 4a iPhone 12 Pro videos? I've been trying to pump what I can out. It's just there's just so much to do, not enough time, considering the fact that I have eight million other things going on. But uh, let me get into chat. Let me say hi real quick. Hamed, am I the first? Yes, you are. Congrats, Hamed. I owe you a cookie. Aiden, <laughs> looks like it. Um, what's going on, Aiden? Welcome to the stream. Uh, says, I can't I can't really do the voice that well. But Brian Wu, welcome. How's it going, Brian? Welcome, welcome. Jason, yo, Heronimo and fam. What's going on, Jason? Welcome. Uh, I had to evacuate due to the Silverado fire, but otherwise I'm doing fine. Stay safe, man. Is is that is that in Southern California? Or is that, I'm not even, I haven't kept up. I remember when I was living in California last year and those fires were scary, man. It was the first time I ever had to deal with anything like that. But uh, stay safe. Stay safe, man. Uh, Deepak, hello, hello. What's going on, Deepak? Welcome. Uh, the Woo. What up, Romy Roman fam? <laughs> you changed your avatar to Rick. Woo! Uh, that was that was a little off, but welcome to welcome. Big House Productions. Hey, Jerome and Stream. Big House, how's it going, man? Welcome, welcome. Baron of Gray Matter. Oh, actually, I forgot. I need to check that message you sent me. 
other people were sending me that too, uh, talking about MagSafe and how MagSafe was pretty much a scam, a waste of money, probably something we don't need right now. But um, I'm assuming that's what you sent too, right, Ed? I'll have to double check. Um, that would have been something to cover today. Uh, Zane, hey, Jerome, going to leave soon, was on the stream yesterday. Great comparison, making me happy about the uh, Pixel 5. Plus, there were a lot of people on the stream yesterday, which is great to see. It is. It's great to see. It's always funny. I see so many people in there, and then I look to see if I get any new subs, and it, I still lose subs every day. Still lose subs. Crazy to see that I've had some high numbers lately, but nobody's subbing, which is like, okay, whatever. Like, well, what am I going to do? Prayush, uh, uh, Zane, um, I'll, I'll say a, a early bye to you if you have to leave early, but uh, welcome, welcome. Prayush, uh, missed live stream yesterday, but saw the uploaded videos today. Good job, Jerome. Thank you, Prayush. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. William Maya, what up? What up, William? How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Will, what up, stream? What up, Will? How's it going, man? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> take some CVD, man. You need, to, I, I really, I've been doing 14 to 16 hour days lately. It's been, uh, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Uh, G boy, eight, eight, eight. What's up all back at it again. What's going on G boy. How's it going, man? Snow balmy 70 degrees, South Carolina. Yeah. It was, uh, like 36 when I went for a walk today, I could only endure a 40 minute walk. And I said, all right, I'm, I'm going back. I usually do an hour and a half or a two hour walk and I couldn't do it. It was too cold. So I bought a, bought a jacket today. I had to buy a jacket because I just, I can't, this is too, I'm last year when I weighed a lot more compared to now. Yeah. I need to wear warmer clothes. Uh, the Wu says, enjoying the videos, Romy, looking forward to the pixel five comparisons. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, bad air quality here today with brown, hazy skies, damn fires. Stay safe, man. Um, fear the roof 42. What's up? Hey there, Jerome, still not getting notifications. So forcing myself to remember the time. Hope all is well, sir. I, I, I have, I have no idea why that's happening. No idea. Um, <laughs> lethal emperor. No, you meant THC. There you go. <laughs> Jeffrey Molina. What up y'all? What up, Jeffrey? Uh, fear the roof says I get confused every time you read something from the woo. <laughs> always think you're reading one of mine. I could, well, and then the fact that there's also a Brian Wu in here as well. Oskin, why late, Jerome? Oskin, I, I'm a busy man. Let's just put it that way. Welcome, Oskin. Welcome, welcome. Swanye, what's the word? The bird is the word, Swanye. How's it going, Swanye West? Swanye West. Welcome, welcome. All right. So let's talk about, um, we can talk about the OnePlus. We can talk about this phone from XDA, which actually sell wonk link to me, which is Great, but I kind of want to talk about the 4A and uh, the iPhone 12 Pro. So yesterday I did a live stream where I showed you the photo comparisons and uh, the videos as well. When I watched the live stream, when I was editing the live stream and I saw the 4A and the iPhone 12 Pro doing the video comparison, there was a bit of lag and the audio also seemed really off. So it wasn't the best, I think, comparison to, to show that way, which is why if you guys haven't seen this video, I released it this morning, which is the 4A versus the 12 Pro uh, in 4K unedited. And what I did here is I put this in full lighting and as the video progressed, I turned off certain lights to make it a little darker and then darker to the point where, you know, just to, just to show if the 4A could keep up with the 12 Pro. And I just want to have a couple, uh, share a couple thoughts with this. So actually, uh, Altered Tech left a comment on the video that I put out earlier this morning. If you haven't seen it, feel free to take a look at this a little later, but what I got out of this is the 4A and the 12 Pro are really good in terms of video quality and even audio quality with good lighting. And even in pretty dim lighting like here, if you're looking at this dim lighting and you look at the quality, they both look pretty decent for what it is. But I've noticed in this kind of lighting where it's much, much darker, the 4A does have more noise. There is going to be more grain, but in 
like lighting conditions like this, even when you're turning off a couple things and then in bright lighting, like here, everything else looks pretty good. But as soon as we get into the darker parts, you'll see there is a bit more grain. The 12 Pro, I just like that, my sock show here. You can also see the 12 Pro has a wider field of view in general uh, compared to what I'm seeing here on the 4A, or at least it looks, yeah, it definitely does because I'm, I'm much closer in on the 4A here than these are awful stills where these are stopping at. Anyway, um, but the one thing I noticed as well is the 4A in terms of audio is really good. The microphone is really good. Something that they corrected with the Pixel 4, but something that they, not not with the Pixel 4, something, they, something they've corrected with the Pixel 3, because the 3 and the 3XL had awful microphone quality, whatever they were doing in their noise reduction, noise suppression, whatever you want to call it, was pretty bad. And uh, the 4A just seems to keep up. Really, the only issue that I saw here with the 4A was like in much, much darker scenarios. So like you can see here, it's a much softer shot. Not that it isn't on the 12 Pro, but the one thing I noticed as well that I need to point out is in these brighter shots here, you can see that, again, it looks like there's just a little more brightness than there needs to be. You can also see these, the colors here for saturation have been turned up a little more. So you can see this yellow isn't as like, I guess, like the pop of color isn't as rich or as deep as the 12 Pro as it seems to be pushing it here. There's also, and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, oops, that's not what I meant to do. What did I just do here? I just played the wrong. Now there's two versions of me. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, what am I? What happened here? Give me a second. What did I mess up on? Why is it doing this? Um, oh, this is my other video. Did I accidentally click on my old video? What the hell am I doing? Oh, that's my live stream. No wonder it looked weird. <laughs> um, let me get back into this. So the one thing that I was trying to point out is if you look, do you see right here on this part of the screen, there's like a, it looks like a, it's, it's again, like a lens flare kind of deal. I don't know if I have to make this bigger for you to see this, but you can't really see it here, but like there is like a streak of light. And that's just something that the iPhones have an issue with either with all of their lenses or whatever it is. I don't know the actual, you know, science behind what's going on with it, but that, that is something else I noticed. Otherwise the 4a guys for the 4a in terms of photo quality and video quality, photo quality is good as long as the lighting is good for the most part, even in night shots, the night shots for the most part come out pretty well, but the 12 pro does have an advantage in some of those night shots. There, there's still some kind of advantage there during the day though. It, it does look like it just tries to brighten it up too much. The 4a looks a little more realistic. And then again, um, the one thing that I've noticed as well is again, you can see a little more yellow here, but that also gives me a little more of a, like a warmer tone, warmer tone for sure. But uh, the 4A does look more natural. I'm trying to think what I should do next. Should I do a video comparing the 12 Pro and the 11 Pro? Or should I do a video comparing the 11 Pro or the 12 Pro and the Pixel 4? I have other phones as well, but those are the two that I was thinking of. It's either the Pixel 4 next or the 12 Pro. I was even thinking of just doing a video test or a photo comparison between the 4A my 4A and um, my Pixel 4. And just to see if those are really as similar as they've been lately. But um, that's, that's really all I had when it came to this video. If you guys haven't seen this video, feel free to take a look. It was recorded in 4K at 30. Oh, yeah, the one thing I wanted to note, uh, to note as well is the audio. The audio on this 12 Pro, even though it might sound a little bit louder, I noticed and actually Ultratech noticed it too and left it in the comments 
is that there is some kind of like buzzing or humming or whatever in the audio. And even though it's just like a teensy bit louder, at least in this with like no wind noise or whatever, there was a bit of humming. I noticed it when I listened to it on my 4A. I noticed it when I listened to it on my 12 Pro. I noticed it when I was watching it on my TV. There's some kind of humming that's not on the 4A. The audio is really good on the 4A. The microphone, the microphone is a lot better than, than I expected. Um, Deepak says for a $350 phone, the 4A holds up really well. It really does. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a very good phone to recommend for somebody who prioritizes a cheap price and a good camera. I'm, I'm guessing that this 4A would still come out better than the iPhone SE 2020 in terms of photo quality, maybe audio. I don't know about video. I wish I had the SE, but like I'm not spending $400. I had that phone already. It doesn't even have night mode, so there's no night mode for that. So yeah, the four the four A would beat that out in terms of like photo quality there. Um, Lethal Emperor is saying which color is more accurate. So in my experience, in what I've been testing so far, the four A comes out with more natural colors. The twelve the twelve Pro really leans on a warmer note, and in a lot of cases, it really brightens up shots more than it should. I said this yesterday. It, it just needs to be turned down a notch on the 12 Pro. Otherwise, like the 12 Pro is still a very good, excellent camera, obviously. Is it worth a thousand bucks in terms of a camera phone? Eh, probably not, most likely not. The 4A is a very suitable phone for $350. Um, it, does, it does take the crown though in the low light shots there. I should test it with the four just to give it a proper, like, you know, even though the, the 4A is the newer phone, it's not their, their top tier phone, but I'll be getting the Pixel 5 in two days. I should be picking it up from Best Buy on Thursday. So I'll do a proper test then. Yeah, Brad, Pixel 5 versus 12 Pro. I don't have the five yet. So whenever I get the five, I will, I will. Um, the best phone under $300 to get I don't know. Is it this new Nord phone that we're supposed to be talking about? I'm not, I'm not really good when it comes to like super budget phones, but it also depends on what's important to you. Can you get a Pixel 3a for under $300? If you can, that might be a better deal if you're looking for a great camera. Um, Hopkins says, also compare the ultra wide cameras. I will. I will. Definitely. I'll, I'll be testing that uh, as well. The Wu says, your walls look beige with an iPhone. I could see that. Yeah. That's actually like, as I'm looking at it now, I could like, look, so, so there, there you go with that yellow. You can, you can see here that it just, it has kind of that tint. So my walls here in my apartment, they're gray. And, uh, I can see that. I can see that. Gandex says 12 versus 11. Wait for the pixel five. I, yeah. I mean, I eventually will do all of them. I just need the time to do so. But um, I, I am kind of curious if the 11 Pro, how far behind the 11 Pro is to the 12 Pro, or is it even far behind at all? But definitely something to 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 do as well. Uh, Swanye says, heard about a lot of weird shit with the five having gaps in the case and the hardware. So yeah, a, a lot of people have been talking about it. I don't know if anyone here has a five that has the gap, but it's definitely something I'm going to take a look at when I get my Pixel 5 um, as well. Okay, let me see here. Igor Pajkanovich, how's it going? Evening, evening. Uh, the Wu says, so as of now, are you keeping the 12? I'm, I'm keeping the 12, but I'm going to return it after the two-week period. I'm going to buy the 12 Pro Max. I'm almost positive I'm going to buy the 12 Pro Max because I want to see if the camera is actually going to be better. My, I mean, the 12 Pro is a great camera, but it's like it's really hard to spend a 1000 bucks on it and feel like I'm getting my money's worth, at least for me. I know that it's more than just the camera, but you know, the camera's always like on the top of my list, so I'm always expecting a lot out of it. Uh, Julio Vega says the Xperia One is on a deep sale. What is it going for? I mean, I don't, I'm not going to be buying it, but uh, 
I know there might be some people who might. Oh yeah, Igor is saying the Xperia one or the one Mark two. Um, yeah, it says the four versus the 12 would be good. Neural chip battle. That's not a bad idea either, just to see where that goes. Um, yeah, Big House says uh, another great choice, the 3A or the 3A XL. Uh, Fear the Roo says, had to send back my iPhone 11 defective. Damn. Um, thoughts on the 11 Pro versus the 12, 600 to $700 price range. I I mean, I like, I like the 12 Pro. It is a different feel in the hand. I think the 11 Pro still still feels better in the hand just because it has rounded corners. I've also noticed the the buttons on the side here on the on my um, iPhone 12 Pro they're flat as opposed to rounded on the 11 Pro. Like these are small things, but uh, I noticed that it just the 11 Pro feels better in the hand. The 12 Pro I like the aesthetic look. I like the flat edges or whatever on it compared to the rounded ones on the 11 pro. But for me, the 11 pro definitely feels better in the hand. As far as performance, the 12 pro feels like it's smoother, but I don't know if that's just in my head. I haven't had enough time to really, really mess around with it, but 12 pro is a great phone. I just, if you can get an 11 pro at a good deal, I mean, we'll wait and see till I do a camera comparison for the 11 pro and the 12 pro. Maybe that's what I'll do today. Um, or at least start doing some of them and start putting them out. Um, so yeah, uh, as soon as as soon as I do, like wait for that and and see what's up with that. Uh, where am I at here? Uh, Terrence, what's going on, Terrence? Uh, hey, what's up? So far, the camera between the 11 Pro and the 12 Pro just shows that the 12 Pro is brighter and cooler. You know, that's sad if that's really the case, and it really does look like it from what I'm seeing. Is they're both great, but the 12 Pro being a brighter, like having brighter results doesn't mean that it's the better phone. You know, I talked about this yesterday when I was showing the night shots. And in some instances, the 12 Pro was just like overexposing or it was blowing out the lights a little more than it needed to. And that for me is enough to be like, well, why, why even do that? Just to show a little more in the foreground or the background. I, I've said this before. I prefer a shot that doesn't look like it's being shot at like three in the afternoon. I'd rather have it look like it's being shot at 10 PM, you know, um, Krishna, I made it. Hey guys, what's going on, Krishna? Welcome, welcome. Uh, Igor says apparently you won't have the gap on the U.S. version. Is that so? Is that what they've been? Is that what they've been saying that the U.S. the U.S. ones haven't had the gap? That's interesting. <laughs> Javon, I'm lurking. Welcome, Javon. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, Terrence, exactly because it just overexposes like you showed yesterday. Uh, Deepak, is the 12 Pro gold color or silver? So this is the gold color. This is I'm I actually when I get the 12 Pro Max, I'm not going to get the gold one. So the sides here look gold, or at least it's 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 because my light is really bright. But this is more of a gold color. But this back is so light, it doesn't even look gold at all. It looks more like a like an off white even like a bit, it's not, I don't care for it at all. So I'm wondering how the silver looks, or maybe I'll just get graphite and get the, the, the darker color. I don't really care for the blue color. I'm not a fan of like that kind of blue. I like more of like, I like teal a lot. Teal is one of my favorite colors. Turquoise. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of darker blues, like navies or whatever. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look as gold as I initially thought it was going to look. Um, the Wu says, I think the video comparisons will be more interesting. Still shots seem to be consistent over the years. Just me. No, and that's true. But I'll be doing both. I'll test photos. I'll test video just so we get an idea of how how these phones are going to go. The iPhone 12 Pro is brighter when I compare it to my 11. There you go. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Looks like Apple just listened to MKBHD's blind test that people pick brighter picks. It sucks because that's not how we should be doing this. That's not how they should come to that decision. Oh, let's just make it brighter because, you know, more light, we can convince people that more light equal. It's like, dude, no, that's not how it should be. Shouldn't. Granted, in, in instances like this, like, like I was showing you guys, 
Um, well, actually, I, I might as well show this too. Did you guys notice when I made this video, when I released it this morning, when I made it pitch black, there is that purple hue that you guys are talking about. Look at how the 12 Pro handles that black. This actually makes it look like the lights are off. The 4A makes it look like the 4A makes it look like I'm about to watch some horror movie from like the 80s on a VHS tape. The the 12 Pro is really good at keeping the blacks black. So if we look again at this darker, well, not here. Um, where am I at here? Right here. You can see the 12 Pro is really good at night. It it can take the little bit of light and make it look a lot more clearer than what the 4A is uh than what the 4A is showing here. I'm I'm still interested how the 4 is going to how the 4 is going to turn out if I do a, a similar test like this. Is it going to be the same as the 4A or is it going to be better? I'm going to have to test that out. Maybe I'll test that out tonight. There are a lot of videos coming. These are how I'm going to do these from now on. Somebody left a comment on one of my photo, whatever that I just put out and said, I liked your old style better. It was more entertaining. And like, I get that there's music and like I put Arnold in there, but also it takes 16 to 18 hours to edit that video. And when I'm not even gaining subscribers and I'm still losing subscribers every day, it's like, there's no point. There's no point. <laughs> I'm just going to like throw out as much as I can give you the knowledge that I have, share it with you, give you my thoughts and like, move on, move on. Um, where did I, <laughs> Hopkins says on the iPhone 12 Pro, it's just black. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Lethal Emperor likes that blue. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. For me, I'm just, I'm not digging it. Um, it should have been gold on gold. That's what I wanted. I wanted a gold on gold for the iPhone 12 Pro. I mean, I ordered a gold. Why are you giving me like this, whatever color on the back? This is not gold. This is more of a gold, even though it doesn't look like it from the light here. But this, this back color is not gold at all, at all. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll work on another video today, maybe Pixel 4 and the 12 Pro. It's just so goddamn cold outside. I hate going outside because it's so cold. I don't have a winter jacket and it's just, uh Jennifer Cho, how's it going? Legit in this stream, the iPhone 12 Pro Gold looks silver. It really does. It really does. Um, yeah, Ryu, like the OnePlus 8T Blue. There you go. There you go. All right. Fazil uh, says the Nord N100 is just a rebranded Oppo A53. So maybe we should get into that. Maybe we should get into that. I, I, I can't just have a, a 4A iPhone 12 Pro discussion all day. Whether it brings the numbers in or not, it's not. It's like I'm I'm here to talk about news and tech and what's going on. And uh... hi, Paul, how's it going? I just saw your your chat in here. How's it going? How's it going? All right, so let's go ahead. Let's talk about these OnePlus phones. Anybody is anybody buying the Nord N10 5G or the Nord N100? These are cheaper versions of OnePlus phones. Never settle, huh? Never settle. Well, it looks like we're settling. So uh, OnePlus announced a pair of new phones for its mid-range Nord lineup, the N10 5G and the N100. Both are sitting below the existing 379, 399, or 379 pound, 399 euro Nord in terms of specs and price. The N10 5G starts at 329 pounds in the UK and 349 euro in Germany. Um, I didn't know that they were going to be selling the N10 5G elsewhere. I thought this was just a US version. And then, well, it says here the N100 starts at 179 pounds, 199 euros, around $235 US in the same countries and is powered by a Snap 460. Unlike the original Nord, which was only released in Europe and parts of Asia, OnePlus says the N10 5G and N100 will eventually launch in North America. Oh, eventually launched? Does it mean it's not coming out here first? The company has confirmed that both phones will be available there at a later date following their European release. Okay. Well, it looks like we're getting it later. OnePlus says the N100 will arrive in the UK on November 10th with the N10 5G following later in November. 
as its name suggests. The OnePlus Nord N10 5G is a 5G handset. The phone will support sub six gigahertz, but not millimeter wave. Yeah, again, we're not going to go into that right now. Millimeter wave is kind of useless at this point. OnePlus is yet to confirm which 5G tech it'll support in North America. It has six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of uh, expandable storage. It's actually got a slightly bigger screen than the more expensive OnePlus Nord at 6.49 inches, and it has the same 90 hertz refresh rate. Rear-mounted fingerprint sensor rather than an in-display one, but you get dual stereo speakers, a feature that was missing from the Nord. 4,300 milliamp hour battery, warp charge 30, so charging at 30 watts, and it comes with Android 10. And then uh, quad camera in the back, <laughs> 119 degree ultra wide, so an even wider ultra wide than the Pixel 5. Macro and monochrome cameras that nobody uses. I'm kidding, maybe some of you guys use that, but yeah. Selfies are handled by a 16 megapixel camera. And then the N100, the cheaper one, the sub $200 one apparently, um, a 6.52 inch display, stereo speakers, dual stereo speakers, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but it can only charge at 18 watts. That kind of like confuses me. So you're gonna put a big ass battery in there, but you're gonna put 18 watt charging? It just sounds so slow to charge that thing to 100%. Storage also reduced at four gigs and 64 gigs respectively. Never settle? Looks like you're settling. <laughs> it's 4G rather than 5G and you get fewer rear camera and you got one, you get one fewer rear camera here for a triple camera setup, 13 megapixel main, two additional cameras for portrait and macro shots. So no ultra wide, like the N10 5G rear mounted fingerprint sensor and the phone also runs Android 10 out of the box. So the original Nord did a great job at offering OnePlus's traditional strengths at a more affordable price point. The N10 5G and N100 are cheaper still, so it'll be interesting to see if the company has found a similar balance this time around. Updated with clarification that uh, while N10 5G will support only sub six gigahertz in Europe. Okay, yeah, we read that already. So N10 5G, N100, anybody shopping for this? Anybody looking for one of these phones? Maybe you're looking for a phone that's under $200. Maybe that's your price point and the N100 might be suitable for you. It's not really anything I'm looking for, but you know we might as well cover it, see if it is worthwhile or not. Um, oops, sorry, wrong one. But uh, yeah, there you go, Oppo A53. So it looks like they're just rebranding the phone. How much is an Oppo A53? Is that a lot cheaper? Can you just buy that phone instead and have it exactly the same? There you go. Big House says, or you could just charge it overnight. No problem with 18 watt. Fair enough. Um, Ed is saying, so I should have I should have talked about this. So this MagSafe, for people that don't know, MagSafe is what they're putting on the iPhone 12 Pro. You know, magnets on the back of the phone so you can charge it wirelessly or whatever, however that shit works. But I heard it's $40 for the MagSafe charger, but it doesn't even come with the power brick to do 15 watt. Is it 15 watt charging, wireless charging? But if you want the power brick, you got to spend another 20 bucks if you don't have one. Oh, 20 watt, Ed says here. So you're spending $60 on a charger to have a wireless charge at, what is it, 20 watts? Or I thought it was 18 or whatever it was. Um you get vastly reduced charging speed, even if you use other Apple chargers like an 85 watt charger. Vastly slower means like one watt charging, really? So they're forcing you to buy it then. You can't use any other kind of charger that's gonna give you faster charging speeds? Is that is that what that scam is? Is that how Apple's doing it? That's pretty shitty. I, I haven't read too much about it, so I'll have to take a look. Hmm. That's what she said. Is that for this? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Deepak says, I got an Anchor 18 watt charger. Works fine. Oh, you mean just if you're charging wired. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Krishna says, uh, OnePlus launching the N100 makes damages uh, or damages its brand value big time, in my opinion. They were just getting uh, 
reputed, am I saying that right? As a premium brand from mid-range market and now they release this absolute contradiction <laughs> to never settle. It's so funny to me because it's like they're even putting it on their goddamn phones, never settle. And then their cheaper version, never settle. And it's like, dude, that's exactly what you guys are doing. You're settling on these phones. I get what they're doing. They're trying to like price it right and like give you whatever, but it just seems like, I don't know. I don't know. I just want OnePlus to have one good phone that they used to do at a really decent price. And uh, that was exciting. I don't find anything exciting about the N10 5G. I don't find anything exciting about the, the N100. I really don't. That's me though. I mean, I guess in the same respect, I could say, why am I getting excited for the Pixel 5? I don't know. Camera, maybe. Stock Android, maybe. <laughs> Igor says, nope, I'm done with OnePlus. I haven't bought a OnePlus since the OnePlus 6T. Deepak says, OnePlus is becoming Xiaomi, 3,000 models and variations. It's kind of sad, isn't it? It's kind of sad. Uh, Baron of Gray Matter says it's 15 watt charging. Yeah, I'm not spending $40 on a MagSafe charger, $20 on a power brick. Like, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. Uh, Fossil says, in fact, Oppo A53 comes with 90 hertz, a 90 hertz refresh rate, and the Nord N100 will come with 60 hertz. They rebranded as an average phone and even took away some key features. That's sad, isn't it? Why would you buy? Why would you buy this phone then? Why not buy an Oppo A53 if that's the case? Yeah, Deepak says uh, the Oppo A53 is a far be better value. Yeah, uh, Carl Pai is gone. So I don't know what's changed. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> this cold, snowy weather is making me sleepy. Same here, man. When I woke up today and I looked out the window and I'm like, God damn it, it's snowing again. But I still went for my walk and I was just like, whatever. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, Cross White 17. I might get the cheaper Nord. Hi, Cross White 17. Um, throw it away and use the charger. <laughs> and use the charger for my iPhone. That's pretty savage, Cross White. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, uh, I highly doubt we're the target market for the OnePlus Nord. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not. Um, I just, I still got to put my opinion in there. I got to put my two cents in. I think we all do. I think we all do. Um, watch uh, Mark's text video after this stream and you'll see. I'll, I'll have to give a look. Actually, do me a, oh, you don't use, oh, you did you send me the link on Facebook? I know you said you don't use other social media. So if you didn't send me that link to that video, uh, feel free and I'll, I'll give a look. Um, whatever happened to one phone per company per year, OnePlus Nord Mini will be released next month. Actually, that's a great segue into talking about one phone per company. One phone per company. Did you guys see this? This was from Selwonk. Selwonk sent this to me on Twitter. If you guys ever want to send me stories or like be like, hey, Jerome, did you see this? Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Tag me, put me in there so I can at least take a look at it. It doesn't mean I'm going to talk about it just because you tag me, but it gives me an, an opportunity. It like pings me and I'm just like, oh shit, I should take a look at this. Um, feel free to do that on Twitter. You can also follow me on Instagram, but Selwonk actually showed me that uh, XDA, are you guys familiar with XDA? Do you, any of you use XDA? I used to use, I used to be on XDA all the time because I used to root my phones all the goddamn time and XDA was a great resource. It's still a great resource to do a lot of that, but XDA, the community on XDA decided that they were going to make a phone. So they made a phone. They announced this today at 10 a.m. And it's the world's first phone to run lineage. I was like, okay, I can I can deal with this. I can deal with this. I can I can I can see where they're going here, but I have a couple issues with this phone. So um it's cool though, because it's like a full keyboard. It seems like a solid phone from what I'm seeing. Do you guys know about this? Have you seen this? This is the One Pro X, One X, what is it called now? It's called the Pro One X, made from FX Tech. So instead of like going over the actual details, let's, uh, let's take a second and uh, let's watch this. Let's, let's see what this is about. For you guys that haven't seen this, uh, 
we're, we're going to, we're going to get into it. So, um, let me unmute this and, uh, here we go. Introducing the pro pro one X. X, a smartphone designed to put you back in control brought to you by FX tech and XDA. The pro one X is the world's first consumer smartphone. Do you, do you guys like this right here? I think I haven't used a flip out keyboard in a while, but this seems kind of welcoming and I kind of like the idea of where this is going. I also like the fact that it's it's lineage, right? It's it's what I used to rock with back in the day. Anytime I wanted to just have like a really clean, customizable experience. Brian with the dollar super chat. Brian, thank you, man. Thank you for the support as always. Um, yeah, today's Tuesday. I know you're probably working. So uh Hopefully you're doing well, Brian. Hopefully you're good. Thank you again for the super chat as always. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead. Let's continue. On Lineage OS out of the box, the platform that gives you control, control over your data, control over your privacy and control over your software. The truth is smartphones don't give their users a whole lot of choice when it comes to software. Like us, you're probably tired of being forced to share your location history or having apps. So, so a big thing here that they're trying to like promote is privacy and control and customizability. But I see Team Vari here. Hey, Team Vari, how's it going, man? And he puts a big like this is a great way to put it. With the XDA phone, I think they'll, I think it'll all boil down to whether or not you want a camera. Um, a user experience or specs, because I don't know where this phone lies in the camera department, but I can only imagine that the camera isn't going to be the greatest experience. The specs are also not the specs that you might be expecting for the price, but uh, it's still worth mentioning because this is kind of what I've been looking for in terms of like a truly, truly stock Android experience with a lot more privacy that comes with it. And I'm assuming a better update, a better like software kind of support deal, especially coming from XDA. All right, continuing on. Or tracking everything you do, but it doesn't have to be like this. At FX Tech, we want everyone to have this deeper level of control and choice on their smartphone. So we've chosen two of the most secure and open OSs in the industry. Lineage OS or Ubuntu Touch OS. The Pro One X is the world's first consumer smartphone to run Lineage OS out the box, offering the pure Android experience that many of us love while giving you the power to control how much information is shared with the apps you use. The phone's privacy guard allows you to manage app permissions and root access so you can keep your private life private. For Ubuntu users, the Pro One X is the most powerful Ubuntu Touch smartphone ever made. Thanks to a Qualcomm chipset, it runs the interface super so smoothly. So the Qualcomm chipset is an 835, to a just an FYI, an 835. Simply plug it into your monitor and experience Ubuntu like never before. It's like and sometimes you just chipset. can't beat a physical keyboard. Whichever. So I, this is actually kind of exciting for me. I like, I, this actually looks solid. This looks like a solid keyboard. It looks like a solid experience. I just, so I'm just going to kind of like break this to you right now for people who are not aware. This is a, um, 835 Snapdragon chipset, and I think it's going for still over $600. <laughs> Baron of Gray Matter says, uh, still fast, still faster than the Pixel 5, which is also very true. So here I am saying, man, this phone is over $600, but it'll still probably outperform the Pixel 5. And it's also eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. So maybe it's not the worst, but what is the camera experience like? Also, Krishna says, wow, those are some very long nails. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine trying to type with nails like that. All right. Whatever platform you choose, you get to enjoy our unique split screen multitasking experience and the power of 64 keys at your fingertips. We've also increased the RAM and storage while keeping the best features our community loved about the pro. So, so here we go. Look, 
eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. A, I love that they don't put the actual Snapdragon because they know that's probably like a sore spot, but it is a Snap 835. Uh, AMOLED display, dual SIM card support, a headphone jack, expandable storage, and a fingerprint sensor. It also has stereo speakers from what I think I saw. But does that mean they're front firing or does it just mean that there's a speaker here and then one at the bottom? That I'm not sure. Pro one. I love the aluminum body, the notification LED on the front, the stereo speaker. Oh, yeah. LED notification, LED notification for anybody that's new to the phone game or they haven't been around for as long as I have in the phone game, the phone has an LED notification light. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, I mean, it has, it has a light up front on top here, like the one that's kind of blinking, but you know, you're not really supposed to see that blinking light. Uh, they had them back in the day on like my Moto X Pure and you could have it blink different colors. So back when I used to use Facebook, I would have it blink blue. When I used Snapchat, it would blink yellow. If it was Hangouts, it would blink green. I would have it blink certain colors so I wouldn't even have to look at my phone. I could be sitting away from it and if I could see what color was blinking, I knew what I was getting notified with. I love that. And uh, it's good to see that they have, it seems like this phone is for people who know a lot of the old school things. I think the only thing that's missing is a removable battery. Otherwise, it, it seems to have a lot of stuff that I look for in a phone. Although I need to double up and see what the stereo speakers are all about. The SD card slot. And of course, the five row backlighted keyboard. The best thing about the Pro yeah, One that's right. is that it's I don't need to worry keyboard. about leaving my laptop behind because I can work on the go from my phone. That's what it comes down to for me to have a real keyboard, to have a tap, to switch between form functions and such. What about you guys? That's do you guys use, main would you use that real keyboard? So keyboard, Or yes, do you think it's So can pointless. I recommend the FXI Pro One? Of course I can without any doubt. I, I, yes, please. I just, I love the, I love the clicky the clickiness of hearing that, I don't know. There's something satisfying about hearing that click. So can I recommend the FX Pro oh. One? Of course I can, without any doubts. I already for myself bought a second device in case this one goes missing or gets broken beyond the start. The XDA community is world renowned for going above and beyond the traditional smartphone experience. By partnering with FX, I hear that. we're really I'm excited honestly. to Welcome, bring the advanced the features way. of both Lineage OS and Ubuntu Touch <laughs> much wider audience. I'd use a keyboard for two myself weeks and, and get lazy. I, I, I could see myself doing that too. At a time where oh, there you go. Will. market was IR our blaster. Opinion, crying out that too. innovation. We designed the Pro One to be the best landscape keyboard smartphone. We won awards, featured in media, and shipped to more <laughs> than 50 countries. What's going on, Munchie? Welcome, welcome. What's most amazing are reviews from customers who share our yes, passion exactly, for better Javon, functionality exactly. in smartphones. Having shipped thousands of Pro See, that's the in thing. the past 12 months, I'm, I'm really worried about the camera on it. Pro One X to as many of you as possible. Whether you're a Lineage <laughs> user who wants the best Ted, privacy OS, so mean, or an Ubuntu diehard who wants the <laughs> I'm ultimate not even Linux show that. experience that's so mean. on the mobile, with your backing, we will bring you a smartphone that puts you. I have back no idea, in Fazil. I'm not sure. The Pro One X. Back us today and choose your OS. <laughs> yeah. So, so this phone, this phone is pretty pricey for what it is. It has the pixel three camera. Is that true? Are you, are you, are you messing with me? Um, so it might be a decent camera. Okay. Just for anyone who's wondering you, if you want to order this, you have to go to Indiegogo cause it's, it's a, startup, whatever it is. And uh, I think you were able to get it for under $600 if you got it like super, super early. But right now you can get it for 640 and it comes with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. But look, you're not gonna be able to get it until March of 2021, not until March. So you got some time to wait. <laughs> you gotta wait until March of twenty. You gotta wait until March of twenty twenty one to get your Snapdragon eight thirty five. I'm not gonna lie. There was a part of me that was thinking about getting it. I was like, maybe I should get it because it's running like 
lineage and like it's just i really want to mess with a phone that to know that it comes stock that way is great um sorry i'm taking care of people here who are <laughs> anyway uh I, it's just, it's so funny how people just come into spam. It's like, I don't, is that fun for you guys? I don't understand. Is that fun? Anyway, um, but I, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get this phone. Will knows what's going to happen. Will, Will sees me do this all the time. I'll buy the phone and then I never use it again. It's just, I get it because it's like, oh, that seems cool. I'd use it and then I'd stop using it. I want to try it just for like the stockish Android stockish, like the privacy and all that kind of stuff. But I just don't know if guys, I don't, what is, why, why are you guys so annoying with this spam shit? I just don't understand. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. So, uh, right now you can get it for six thirty nine. Um, and then I don't know what this is. Is it just if people run out of this and then you get it for six seventy nine dollars instead? Is, is there something? I don't think there's anything different about it. Does, does this, is this a phone that you would buy? Is your privacy, I mean, privacy is important and that might be a priority to people, making sure that they have all of that granular control to make sure People aren't following their shit or whatever it is. It's it's not something I think about because I feel like we don't have control over it. But this phone can give that to you. You can get your control back. You can get your privacy back. Or at that point, are you just like, I don't care. Let them track me however they want. There is nothing I can do about it. I don't know. Um yeah. And then they have like these, I don't know what this, Oh, I see. So you can get it earlier, but you got to pay more. Oh, so these March, 2021, this March, 2021, you can get for as little as six thirty nine. but if you pay more, well, that's kind of shitty. You can get it by December of 2020. If you spend $750, at least for this one, this pre-Christmas, and it's not even the eight gig version. My God, that's that seems like a shitty. Okay, so oh, you were able to get it for five hundred. I didn't know it sold for as cheap as five hundred. Okay, for five hundred, I could maybe see. I could see that for five hundred for eight gigs of RAM and two hundred fifty six gigs of internal storage, maybe. Um. But man, eight hundred dollars to get it by Christmas. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll wait and like, see if they make another version later in the future or whatever. It's, I don't know. I like the fact that at least there's a company that's putting something out there. That's putting priority on stock Android and giving you your privacy back, giving you your control back. Um, yeah. That's all I got for that. Uh, Will is asking, Jerome, did your Pixel 5 ship? It did. So I got a notification today about my Pixel 5. They shipped the black one. I canceled the green one because I'm picking up the green one on Thursday at Best Buy. Hopefully they'll have it. Hopefully it's not some bullshit where they say we don't have it. Then I'll have to wait for the, the black one to come on Friday, I think. I think Friday or Saturday. But hopefully... Hopefully the one from Best Buy, the green one I ordered will come on the 29th. That's my hope. Um, no, I, so it's not shipping from Best Buy. Will I'm, I, I actually said, I'm going to pick it up. Did yours, did yours say it was shipping already? Um, Ted, great show, Jerome. Thank you, Ted. Let's hit the like button. I forgot to mention that for anyone who's in here, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It shows support. If you enjoyed the stream, feel free. Um, I, I say it like, Oh, maybe if you want to hit it, God damn it. Hit the like button, hit the goddamn like button. Do it right now. Your life depends on it. <laughs> I do stream weekdays at 2 PM central. So hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell notification. If you want to get notified of when I do stream, 
Always appreciate you guys uh, coming in here. Also, for people that are in here, and if you notice people with green in their name, a red Chicago star next to their name, that's because they are part of the Phone Jerome fam. You could be one too for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is hit that blue join button. You get the red Chicago star next to your name. You'll get to use custom emoji. Um, you'll get your name in the intros and outros of my live streams. You'll you'll also get access to my private Discord where we talk about tech and other whatever stuff. So again, all you got to do is click that blue join button. If you can't find it, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. That's all I got for that. Guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, ultra, ultrasonic tracking. What am I missing out here? You guys need to tag me because I, I just, I know I'm not going to remember anything. <laughs> um, don't open the other one. They'll charge you for stock. Yeah. So even though I'm getting the Pixel 5 in black and green, I think I'm just going to keep whatever comes to me first. Whatever I get first is the color I keep. Part of me wants the green one, but I also kind of like the black looking one. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Kieran. Hi, Kieran. Can I buy OnePlus Nord for PUBG gameplay? I'd imagine for the 765G, you could probably do it for PUBG, but like I'm not a gamer. So I can't give you like, I can't tell you for sure if it's the best one for that kind of gaming. Maybe actually Team Vari might be helpful. Well, I don't know if Team, Team Vari doesn't have a 765G. I know that Deepak does, but I don't know if he plays. Oh, God damn it, Nick. Hi, Nick. The black texture is grippier actually. Or apparently, well, that sucks. That's the one I want. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. I'll keep the one that I get first. I'll keep the one that I get first. So, all right, guys, uh, I think that's going to be it for today. I have a lot of shit on my plate that I still got to like work on. So, I'm going to do that again. If you guys like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button or hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for Brian for the super chat today. Thank you to all my patrons all my YouTube members come back again tomorrow, 2 PM central. We'll do it all over again. We'll talk more tech. I don't know if I'll have another camera comparison video, but if I do, you'll see it. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.